Good morning. Hope you guys are well. This is Joe from Queen's Technologies, if you don't know. And I hope you're having a good day. What's today? Um, today's Friday, Friday feeling. Yay! Uh, what am I doing? Oh, I'll show you. Okay, cool. Let's have a look. Can you see that? Great. So this lovely uh, data uh, points. Yeah, data points. <laughs> data points. This one, this old computer here. Lovely old computers. Uh, this cable, RJ45 cable, this one here, the clip's not there. So it's not plugging into, when it does plug in, like this, lights on, great, but then keeps them coming out. So this is a school where therefore some of the children seem to pull things and like to go in the back of the PC. So what I'm going to do now is replace it, replace it with, this, with a new Cat6 cable, but this existing cable here, it's punched in, as in the bat box clip is come away. It's kind of, so it's un, I can't get the clip to unplug it. So what I'm gonna do is screw it out, fix it, plug it back in, take this out, then put this new cable in. Cool, so let me crack on and do that. Yeah, these old bat boxes, after a while, the clips behind it, if you push it in too hard, it'll break and it'll come away. So all I want to do at the moment, I'm not going to repair it. I'm just going to push it back in so I can get the clip so I can release the cable. Yeah. So uh, get this one out. Okay, taking the old cable out. Uh, I haven't got anything to repair it with at the moment. Just going to replace the cable. I'll get a new data port base plate and put it in. But just need to get the PC up and running. There's no damage on the cap existing um, bat box in the sense of the cabling. Um, so I just need to get a new. Cool, so new Cat6 cable. And as you can see, back of the machine, plugged into the ethernet port and clipped in nicely so the teacher could log on and start delivering the great curriculum that she's going to do okay cool all right on to the next one what are we doing today something slightly different so we've got some ipads we've got about five ipads one two three four five actually to tell a lie we've got <laughs> we've got a total of 30 ipads to set up today now i'm basically going to do full supervision with these apple devices and what do i mean by that all right so for example once i set it up which i'll show you guys how i actually set, set it up and make the connection between apple school manager and meraki okay so i'm basically going to log into apple school manager you type it into google apple school manager you have to register the school with Apple School Manager, so it can use these services. So you have to prove to Apple that it's a school which is gonna be using this product. So you could use it for free, because it's free for education to use. Which I've done, verified, and that's been done. So what I'm doing now is just logging in. And then I'm also going to, I've already logged into Meraki, and I've logged into the school's assistant manager profile. You'll see my name. Oh, don't worry, we're gonna blow all this out anyway. Okay, so when you log into your Apple School Manager, you'll get a thing called organizational ID, an ID number, yeah? Now I'm going to blur all this out anyway. So, but it's an ID number, which you pass on to the reseller. The reseller will pass their own Apple ID as well to add to this Apple School Manager for you, to guys, for you guys to see. Once you've given your organizational ID to um, your reseller, they will add the iPads serial number to your Apple School Manager. For them to be able to do that, you need to get a reseller's ID from them and add it to your Apple School Manager, okay? So you will go into management server, assignment, and then you'll have like customer numbers, and then you'll press edit and you'll add drop down menu reseller, and then you add in their ID and you press add and it will come up like that. And the reason why you do that, so they add the devices to the right organization, which is obviously yours. And then you'll see, which is already there already. This will enable you to have full supervision. You need this set up first, and then you need to set up the link to your MDM, which is Meraki, which is the one we're currently using for the school. We need to do MDMs. Cool, so these are the three things we need to link. 
Apple Push Certification. This association is purely to allow Meraki to push Apple apps or Apple configurations on behalf of Apple School Manager. That's the link. So this again, Meraki acts as an enrollment on behalf of Apple School Manager and then Apple VPP accounts associates the purchases of the apps that you're downloading. So it's just that link of purchasing power. All right, so this is the link. So this, the first one we're going to do is associate the certificate first. Uh, let's download, so we're gonna download. Okay, so I downloaded that. Um, so we need to go into push notification. Need to now enter in the username and password of an Apple ID to associate it with. Uh, um, okay, it says create a certificate, agree to the terms and conditions, and uh, you have to upload the file which was downloaded, upload, and then it's going to make you download the file, so then you could upload it again to associate the connection. The connection will only last for a year, for all, for all. you'll have to redo these every year. Um, that's just how it works. Then you add, uh, and then you press test, fingers crossed. And yeah, should be that association now is connected. So Meraki can now speak to Apple School Manager. So we go to the next one, which is add server. Um, so we pick the school, download the key. Then we're already in Apple School Manager. Then B, MDM. So download the token and then upload it to there, to Meraki. And you should see, cool. So it's take the, this is connected, which is great. Uh, so it should show today's date and when it was created and then also the token expiry. And you get the same thing here as it expires at the same time. So we're doing it. So this time next year, it will, we'll have to do the same thing again. And the last one is to associate the, let me just put a name. And uh, that. Email address. So we need to now do the VP, the VPPN payments one, which I think it's in here. I always have to remind myself because <coughs> um, you only technically do this if, like once a year. So, but I do it a few times to be fair with different schools. So I know plus they change, they change or they change the look and feel so sometimes you think oh, I'm in the right place I'm not in the right place okay cool um, now that's been done as well so so all three are connected so when we go to here we could go to system manager overview systems manager systems manager overview you press sync on all of these which is the main ones access school manager volume purchase program and automated device enrollment beautiful all working great so we go back to Apple School Manager, go back onto the devices. With these, we have to now edit the MDM to use the one which is associated to the school. You apply the settings. Are you sure you want to change it? Yep, I do. Okay, so this is now, we're now enrolling the devices. So the devices will now be controlled by the school. They're all there, beautiful. Here is where we purchase the apps. I say purchase, where well, you pick an app to, to download. So we could, what I'm going to do is, um, I'll show you for example, Chrome, and then we go into, uh, and then we say how much quantity, we put 100, it's free anyway, doesn't matter. Um, and that's it, it does take a little while to populate, but yeah, it's definitely being purchased because you can see at the bottom here, so it's been purchased. At this point, we're, we're done with Apple School Manager. I will come back to it when the school comes back to me with a list of apps they would like to deploy. Now we're gonna go into Meraki, pulling these devices through. There you go, 40 are there. 
Yeah, we've got 40 beautiful iPads ready to be deployed. And you do this before you set this up first before you power on the iPad, because if you make a mistake, then you have to reset the iPad again to pick up a new permission. So you make sure you set this up properly, assign settings, create a new one. Yeah. Um, Barnabas, yeah, department, then you don't need that, you don't need that, don't need that. Um, then you go next. When an iPad starts, it gives you a few things you have to do before you get to the iPad, as in, do you want to set that up? You could skip all of that, which I'm going to select. Choose, yeah, it's skip all. And then supervise and hold certificate. There isn't any because it's going to be supervised through Apple School Manager. So that certificate's already been sorted. So you just press next. I enable shared iPad. No, we don't need to do that. These are for the students. And is there, this is with Mac OS, which we're not doing. Save and assign. Now you need to assign. All right, so now they should have the, the network that you've got. That's great. So if we go back into tags, all right, and add a tag manually, you now should see all the devices which you wanna add the tags to. Now, I'm gonna select all for now. I'm gonna call it student. So that tag is associated to all those iPads. Um, I will create another one for teachers because 10 of the iPads are going to the teachers. That's done. So now I need to go back into settings and I need to create a profile. This is how you would apply permissions to the iPad, remove things that shouldn't be there, etc, etc, etc. I'm iOS. And we're gonna go into restricted policies first and we'll basically say what they can do and what they can't do, basically the children anyway. Um, allow camera use, yes. Allow installing laps, no. Allow screen capture, no. I normally put no for all of those. Screen capture is a pain because once they get carried away, the kids, they will just continue to do screen capture and then they obviously will, will start to store that on the iPads and storage will be an issue. So um, there's certain things they just do not need to actually have access to do. I mean, you can modify it exactly how you're, you want to, how it suits the school's needs, so. Okay, it was showing up other things like Windows and stuff, I don't know why. I didn't, I probably didn't connect it properly. Okay, cool. Um, you can do other things on settings, you add Wi-Fi settings as well. One which you might be using quite a lot is probably Web Clip, which you could add web shortcut, basically website shortcuts. Yeah, there's quite a few things you can actually manage and, and um, configure on here, which is great, cool. All right, so that's, done so those are the basic setups that i've done so now that's done i'm going to show you how it kind of works when we power on the ipad <laughs> okay so we're going to turn this ipad on i want to show you how it works the double i think i showed you the first time around but it didn't okay cool so i've connected to the wi-fi you're going to see it there it is looking for or retrieving the configurations um, remote management press enro enroll this ipad there you go and then that's it done now what that does is now going to pick up the configurations the configurations that i set in meraki it's downloaded the profile files you'll see certain things moving and then some you'll hopefully see something installing automatically at some point one second let's see i've installed two apps there you go one app there called Senso and the other app showing, which hopefully you could see is Chrome and that's installed in there. So, okay, so that's full supervision. So I can basically manage these devices from Meraki dashboard. Let's keep it moving.
another school. What we're doing at the moment, one, two, three. Okay, cool. So you'll see here, you've, we've got Amazon tablets and we've got some Acer tablets as well. Okay, and also I've got some two Chromebooks, which I'm doing a quick battery replacement. Okay, so with the what's the story with the Amazon Chromebook? Sorry, Amazon Chromebooks, <laughs> the Amazon Fire Stick tablets. What's the, uh, they got donated. So we're gonna use them for basic Function, basic things, basic, basic access. Yeah, basic access. Okay, cool. Let's have a quick look. I'm doing all of them in kids modes. What's this first one? This is a, a Lenovo. All right, so these Chromebooks, the batteries have gone in them and I've just going to bought some new ones. Just going to replace them basically now should you be using protective gear when you're touching motherboards and replacing stuff and should you have the clips to prevent you from getting an electric shock of course you should and that's best practice so i am not advising doing it the way i do it but table got rubber shoes on <laughs> It was quite a pain to try and make sure I get the right um, batteries. Because when you're trying to source these things, you have to give model numbers, it's model number, serial number, but if the reseller is unable to locate it, or if I'm trying to look it on eBay, I literally have to look for the, the model number of the battery itself. They normally wanna hear that. Uh, this looks like the same size, so we're gonna, up and zoom in there you go so i'm just going to quickly put this in i uh, disconnect the battery from the motherboard before you start messing about with it ah now this is quite boring i wouldn't think this is very very entertaining watching me do this so what do i do now i test how do we test oh we plug it in all right we're going to do the next one now it's funny, I do actually have some fun doing these recordings. When I have time to take the camera out and record, I do enjoy making these videos. I like showing you guys what it's like. I think sometimes it's, it's good to get an understanding of what, what it really is being like a field engineer or, or any role. I think it's good that a lot of people are showing the role of different jobs because it kind of gives you an insight of like, would you, do you really want to do it? Do you? Do you think it's the role for you? Does it interest you basically? I think this period in, in media, when it comes to, you know, a lot of people are able to show what they're doing and expose this age of media, I, think I, I really do enjoy. I think it's opened up the market. It hasn't given it just purely, you have to be on television. And I love the fact that people could be creative in their productions, start doing their own animation shows, start doing their own documentary shows, start I mean, all you need to do now is take a camera and just start doing it and then get better at it. Since the internet's changed that, and I think that's a positive. But then also on the flip side, you do have the negative aspects of putting things online as well. You have positivity and negativity on, on, on these things. But. All right, so I'm hoping this one works as well. Uh, we've got an in battery. The other one did, which is over there charging currently now. And I'm hoping this one does as well. Okay, cool. So we're gonna lift this bad boy up. This is the old one. I'll put the new one on. This is a cool little, we got, you know, you get a lot of tools help you do your job better. The, um, the more useful applications you have or tools to get amongst things, it helps you do your job better. Most jobs to be fair, but especially with IT. So my little tool, I've got like this little tool pouch, which allows me to open up and fix the majority of laptops I come I come across all eyes on me one two three all eyes on me no 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 oh yeah yeah okay cool uh it's on working great okay so I'm going to charge them up give them back to the children so they can crack on with the curriculum and accessing the resources and becoming pioneers in the world of computing see you on the next one